Okay, welcome to our final webinar in the March Madness Sprint to Success. Uh, next Sunday will be Easter Sunday, so we'll be having the weekend off. However, want to make sure that everyone is on board for this final push, this final week. Kind of like the March Madness, the final four is upon us, and it's time to really make sure that we go after it this week. So this week's topic is going to be all about networking for referrals, business networking groups, as well as trade shows. When we first started the uh, webinar series, we talked about trade shows and home shows being popular this time of year and to schedule yourself into attending some of those events. And I'm not sure if they're having them in your area or not, but certainly is a time to make sure that you look out for them. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to leverage trade shows in the future, uh, but certainly if they have those in the future uh, upcoming weeks, you want to make sure that you get to those in your local area. So networking in cold markets, how does it work? You know, cold markets for prospecting can be difficult because you don't have an existing relationship with them and it becomes a very cold scenario. It's almost like you're just selling or pitching products. So we need to warm up these relationships first. You know, cold calling uh, or soliciting is not fun. It's inefficient. It's not well received. And it's really one of the, the quickest ways to get uh, a new web center owner discouraged or frustrated because you're going to have to go through a lot of rejection. And I want you to put yourself on the receiving end of being solicited or cold called. You know, think to yourself if you're at your house and you're in the middle of lunch or dinner or uh, your phone rings and it's a telemarketer or you're at home minding your business and someone knocks on your door. It's uh, very invasive. It's uh, someone intruding on your personal space. and It's not well received because it interrupts your day um, based on what you're currently doing. And business owners are the same way. We have to remember that they are getting solicited and cold calls every single day. You know, the average business is getting five to ten advertising cold calls a day at least. And that doesn't even include office supplies, janitorial supplies, um, uh, other other maybe industry specific uh, vendors calling on them, uh, as well as advertising, marketing, utilities. And they're getting bombarded by sales professionals and it can be very, very uh, intruding and like I said, evasive. So we wanna make sure that we warm up the relationship. So networking in cold markets is not cold calling at all. So how can you prospect for new possibilities in cold markets? Well, one of the best things that you can do is look for referrals, right? Looking for referrals when you're out and about or your current um, database of professionals. You know, who do you know that's well connected? The well connected individuals can lead you to many, many prospects or candidates. So who do you know that's well connected? And I like to think of these professionals as well connected categories, real estate agents, insurance agents, mortgage brokers, waitresses, bartenders, fitness instructors, hairstylists, coaches, community leaders, church leaders, organization leaders, and of course, an already existing database of unfranchised owners in your network. Whether they are your senior partners or junior partners, you have an incredible, incredible source of possibilities through your existing network. So who do you know that may have a contracting business? You know, hey, Sally, didn't know if you knew this or not, but I'm in the process of expanding my business. And I'm focused right now on meeting people that are contractors or landscapers or focus on roofing and siding. So you pick your category and you ask the question. More often than not, someone knows someone in that industry, and especially if you have one of these categories that I just mentioned that is highly well-connected. Again, real estate professionals, mortgage and banking professionals, um, coaches, fitness professionals, hairstylists, they're well-connected, and they've got people that are in front of them every single day talking and communicating. So networking for referrals, it just comes down to building that relationship, right? So it's always just relationship networking. So take them out for coffee, take them out for lunch or dinner, have a networking meeting, right? You know, Frank, you know a lot of people that would be great for me to meet, and I'm sure I know a good number of folks that'd be interested in meeting you as well. So would you be up for exploring how we could help each other out? You don't want to use the word, you know, I'd like to trade referrals, or I'd like to show you everything I do and hope you can refer the right people. That can be a little bit awkward. So when you say it's a mutually beneficial type of arrangement, you say, hey, would you be up for exploring how we could help each other out? It tends to be well received. And at that point, you'll tend to get better referrals and a better response. Now, what do you do when you're uh, in this networking meeting or when you're in a networking group 
or maybe at a chamber meeting or a BNI meeting. Well, it's all about just building that relationship. So building a relationship with people in person creates a stronger bond that makes it easier to build upon rather than just using the phone. If you can connect online and you can use some social networks, fantastic. You can use some direct messaging, fantastic. If you can use a site like Meetup, great. A professional network like LinkedIn, fantastic. But nothing replaces meeting people in person. It creates a stronger bond. So uh, whether it's for the unfranchised business or website sales. So the most important thing is that you got to reach out and meet people and talk with people. That's why the number one daily activity is to connect with two people every single day. And that connection is just, hi, how are you? Right? It's just reaching out. Hi, how are you? Happy birthday. Hope you have a great day. It could be, how's business treating you? Oh my goodness, I haven't seen you since high school. I haven't talked to you in so long. How's business going? Whatever it is, you're just reaching out to start that connection to build the relationship or reconnect or reestablish a relationship. And treat every challenge as a learning experience. You're going to bump, you're going to bumble, you're going to fumble, and it's okay. You're going to fail forward. And it's the best way that you can get out of your comfort zone is just to what? Get out of your comfort zone, right? We talk about the Mel Robbins, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Just do it, right? So never hesitate. He who hesitates is lost. You want to just take action. So be normal, be yourself. Just be a friend making machine. Smile. Hi, how are you today? How's, how's life treating you? The weather's beautiful today or whatever it is. Start that initial conversation and really care about the prospects. You know, last week we talked about, um, you know, how's business going for you? How's, uh, how's your online marketing working for you? Just asking questions, right? And being normal. Just be yourself. Okay. And most importantly, when you're establishing or reestablishing a relationship, don't pitch your products. Don't sell your products. This is not an opportunity to promote, share, present, sell, pitch. It's a chance to just build the relationship and take it one step at a time. You know, I always make the analogy that it's kind of like dating, right? You don't meet someone for the first time and say, hey, I'd love to get married. Are you looking for a spouse? No, <laughs> right? You're going to build that relationship. Hi, how are you? There's got to be some chemistry there. Smile, ask questions, listen to the answer, and really focus on adding value. But you also need to have an answer to what do you do? Whether this is just a general networking meeting and you haven't even approached the subject of being a digital marketing professional or an unfranchise owner or a shop consultant, you need to have an answer to what do you do. Um, people are more apt to ask what you do. They're not going to come up to you and just say, well, what is it? Right? So it's very, very important that in your power statement you have a what do you do, an answer to what do you do. Currently, I'm teaching full-time, but what I'm really excited about is I'm working as a digital marketing consultant, helping small businesses save money and make money. Right? I help businesses leverage the internet effectively to increase cash flow, revenues. My firm works with businesses to market themselves through the internet. I help businesses cut their advertising costs. My company helps businesses expand and grow by leveraging the internet. Answers are endless, right? But the most important thing is that it's got to be your answer. And I'm going to have a challenge for you. The challenge is to write down an answer to what do you do, but you want to verbalize it. You want to role play. You want to talk to your senior partner. Pick another web center owner. Go in the web center um, support group and say, hey, can we role play? It's very important because the tongue is a muscle, and the more you use it, the easier it'll get. If you have a perfect answer on paper and you start to say it out loud, it might not be comfortable. You might stumble over your words, right? You might stutter a little bit. It might not be something natural. So that's why you want to make sure that you have a written answer, but you want to have a verbal answer, and that way it can become your answer and much more comfortable. And you can leverage um, networking groups as a great way to meet business professionals, right? So networking groups are an incredible, incredible uh, resource to have or a source of leads or possibilities or candidates or even referrals. So some could be like the Chamber of Commerce, Business Networking International, BNI, um, certain religious groups, maybe community or town groups, and or certainly some online groups as well. Networking groups are there to network, right? Now, Every time I've talked to a professional and they've had a great um, lead or referral of a networking group, it's a group where they feel comfortable, where people build relationships and they get referrals. Those business networking groups where people kind of shy away from it, they say, oh, well, I've tried that networking group. It wasn't really a good fit. Or there's just some, some dissatisfaction. 
it's usually because every person in there was just trying to sell or pitch their service or product. It wasn't really about the relationship. So some of these, you can actually go into different after hours. You can go in as a guest on many of these, and, and you want to feel it out. You want to find the group that has the best fit and the best chemistry for you. There's going to be personalities. There's going to be different professionals there. You're going to also want to look at your demographic. You're going to look at the area of the networking group to establish uh, in your own strategy what is the best source of referrals and possibilities for you. And you want to make sure that you do that strategically. Talk to your business partners. Talk to other web center owners about tips and tricks and things that they've done. We've got our panelist coming up here soon who's going to talk to you a little bit about how he has leveraged networking groups uh, effectively for his business. And we'll, uh, we'll make sure that you can jot down some notes for that as well. So to make the most out of networking events, you want to try and follow a couple simple rules. Well, the most important thing is to realize it goes both ways. You want to be open to learning about other people. Don't be one-sided, right? You don't want to be the one who's always talking. We talked about that last week and the week before. You don't want to be um, interesting, right? You don't want to be the person sharing, presenting, talking. You want to be the one listening, asking questions, engaging the people that you're talking to, right? Because you can leave a networking meeting and not even share one bit about your business or profession, but gather a lot of information. And when you do that and you've asked a lot of questions, you've made other people feel important in your presence. They're going to think that you were the most incredible professional, whether or not they even know anything about what you do. They're more apt to build that relationship further in an ongoing um, type of uh, meeting or, uh, you know, coffee meeting or, or another uh time to talk about your business and their business at the same time. So certainly number two, you want to exchange information, right? You want to make sure that you get their information, get their business card, write some notes on the back of it, right? Make sure you understand that you can't just collect, you know, 50 business cards and stick them on your desk and, and hope that it's going to turn into business. It's about the relationship. So you're going to want to jot down some notes, but you want to make sure that you have some cards on hand yourself as well. And don't hand out a stack of cards to one person hoping that you're going to get referrals. It doesn't work that way. It all comes down to the relationship. So again, number three, ask questions. Use the time to identify qualified prospects or qualified referrals, right? All based on asking questions. Don't know what questions to ask? Start with some of the questions from our 15-minute assessment. How's business going? Are you using the internet? How's your website working for you? Are you currently ranking on the search engines? And then change the subject and move on. It's got to be quick, got to be brief, got to pique curiosity, got to engage them and let them know that you'd like to follow up with them, but you don't want to take their time because you want to give them a chance to talk to other professionals in the room as well. Four, describe your client. I can't tell you how many times people have gone in and they said, oh, I went to a meeting and I didn't get any referrals. And I ask, you know, how did you add? Well, I was just asking, you know, if you, if you know anyone who's looking for a website, let me know. Sometimes it's a little daunting and it's overwhelming. Yeah, if I think of anyone, I'll let you know. If you can ask for a specific referral for the unfranchised business, for your TLS business or Motos business, or your web center business, the more specific you can be, the more apt you are to get a great referral, right? So focus on asking for referrals for a specific industry. In this case, contractors. Hey, you know what? We're actually knowing that right now the spring market's upon us and we're really targeting helping contractors or landscapers market their business before their busy season. Who do you know that might be a landscaper looking to drive more business, right? You're going to get a referral of a landscaper, right? Now, if you just say, I'm looking for business that want to get, make, you know, the best of their internet presence over the next couple months, they'll say, oh, great. When um, I think of someone, I'll give you a call and they won't, you're not top of mind to them. So the more specific you can be, you'll get that referral. You know, right now I'm currently looking to work with uh, teachers because I know that right now uh, after June, summer sessions there, they're going to be out of uh, out of school and a lot of them are looking for a way to supplement their income. So right now I figured if they can evaluate something to put in place uh, alongside their teaching career that can generate some additional cash flow, they'll have some summer months to get it off the ground. Um, so do you happen to know any teachers or who do you know that's currently teaching that might be open to additional streams of income? Right. When you're more specific, you're going to get more uh, likelihood of a, a good referral. Five, focus on appointments. Right, is not enough time to sell a website or sell a service or sell a product. You don't want to get into sales mode or pitching mode. You want to just schedule an appointment. I'd love to get together and learn more about your business. Would you like some coffee next week? Maybe Wednesday morning, or you know, maybe we can continue this conversation on a phone call next week. And what is it? That's a 10 to 15 minute 
consultation appointment, right? We're going to learn more about their business. It gives you a chance to do some research about the company so that you can have a great result after that. All right. So again, exchange business cards. It brands yourself. It's great for making professional contact. It gives you professional branding. Um, it's great for exchanging once an appointment is set so you have contact information. But it's also great to share with folks who are well connected because they might be apt to have that at their disposal when someone comes to them and asks them or brings it up that they're looking for some marketing assistance. Oh, I just met someone last week in a networking group. Let me pull out their card and get you their information. Right. And also, it's not on this list, but connect with them on LinkedIn. Get on that professional network, connect with them on LinkedIn. If they're open to connecting on other networks like Facebook, they might be using that just as a social network, not necessarily a professional network. Like their business page if they've got one on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, but certainly connect with them professionally. Ask them permission. Hey, would you would you mind if I connect with you on LinkedIn? And they'll let you know. Would you mind if I connect with you on social media? Yeah, I'm really not on LinkedIn much, but I'm on Facebook or Instagram. Whatever it is, ask them and they'll let you know the best way to connect with them online. So how about attending a trade show? You know, we talked about this uh, home show season. So there might be some trade shows. So you want to identify various shows. You know, are there different themes? Where are the locations? Is it an area that you can get to? Is it an area you're growing in? What are the dates, the times? What's a site? Any notes? Any cost? Right? So check the website for the trade show. For a list of who will be there most trade shows actually will have a list of who's attending their expo and even maybe a map of the different booths that are going to be there there might be an event hashtag right how about social media they might have a facebook page or doing something on uh, meetup or or eventbrite right so check out the social networks as well once you know who's going to be attending right do some research do some research do some basic research so you can identify who are some targets that you might want to make sure that you approach and introduce to yourself as a way to start the relationship you know some trade shows are huge they could have a thousand vendors right and it might be a little bit too big to get to every single booth but if you know um, the, the map and you know some of the prospects or candidates that are going to be there and you've done some research, you can target and identify where are some places that you want to make sure that you can effectively use your time. And of course, look for cost to attend as well as if you want to be a, a vendor at one of these trade shows, that's an idea as well. Uh, lots of great results. In fact, we had a testimonial on our Web Center owner support page from um, someone who was able to do a networking or a digital marketing overview at a trade show and generated a lot of leads and a lot of business. So that's something for the Web Center pros and our Web Center majors, something to consider. Start looking for these various home shows or just trade shows and expos in general where you can be a marketing professional and generate a ton of credibility and a ton of leads. So as a guest, you want to just make sure that you're saying hello, you're smiling, you're being polite. But again, don't sell. Just ask questions. You know, it looks like things are going well for you here. It's a busy booth. I love the booth design. Do you currently have a website, right? Just jot down some notes. You know, I'm, I'm here as a marketing professional. Don't want to take any of your time today, but good luck today and move on to the next one, right? Collect and exchange business cards, write notes on the back, just like any networking event. And then again, you don't want to do it the day after the show unless they ask you to because they're usually busy. But two to three days after the show, contact them before it goes too long. You don't want to wait 7, 10, 20 days. The show has gone you know, too long behind us. So contact them. Hi, we met at the home show. How did it go for you? Ask them. Was it was it a good use of your time? Were you able to generate some leads? Fantastic. What went well? You know, I'm thinking about being a vendor at that show. Do you, would you consider that being a good show? What are some of the other shows that you've attended as a vendor or as a guest, right? What else is on your calendar? Start the conversation. Great. Well, you know what? The reason I'm calling is I'm a marketing professional. I was in, uh, impressed by your booth and hopefully it went well for you, but I'd like to learn more about your business. I did a little research on my own before I called you and I just want to take maybe 10 or 15 minutes of your time this week, learn a little bit more about what your goals are and see if there's a way that we can kind of work together and identify some ways that we can help each other out, right? Schedule a 15 minute consultation or appointment if appropriate. If it comes up and they're ready for a demo, great. Schedule the demo. You know, I did some, um, you know, focus on your, your search results, they might say, you know what, we've been, we've been after that for a long time. We're having a hard time ranking for certain keywords. I know how you feel. You know, I was just looking over that and I noticed that you had a lot of competitors, um, you know, ranking ahead of you and that must, that must be a problem. So, um, you know, would you be open to talking with the web specialist about how to fix that? 
right? You might be able to schedule a DMP demo um, right out of the gates. And I think the DMP products lend themselves to home shows and trade shows because they're looking for business now, right? They want to turn business now and those products can help them do so. And certainly part of that conversation can be where do they go from their marketing efforts right to their website. And you can make some recommendations there as well. So if you go to the 12 week action plan and you print it out, um, you can actually go to week 10 and it talks a little bit about networking at trade shows. In fact, if you go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash official MAWC, there's the 12 week uh, getting started action plan webinar series, recorded webinar series. You can go right to week 10 and learn more about networking at trade shows, right? Great uh, use of your time this week. If you want to go through that, you know, 20 to 30 minute segment as your education piece, but you just write it down, you know, business names, contacts, their websites, trade show notes, how to follow up. So that was like power walk through networking, right? Networking, but networking will lead you to the most business, certainly in the web center division, but also as an franchise owner, you think we are from the network marketing industry, although we are radically different, we are still networking one-to-one -one marketing. So if you can meet and greet professionals, you are going to have a higher rate of success, whether it's your unfranchised business or your web solutions business. So you need to get out there and introduce yourself to new people. You need to meet new people. And that's why the number one activity that you can do every single day is reach out and add two new contacts every single day to your list. You know, just think of that. If you were to commit to that, two per day, five days a week is 10 new contacts each and every week times four weeks is 40 new contacts contacts every single month 40 new contacts every single month times 12 months that's 480 possibilities even if you only had 10 percent of them in an appointment that's 48 appointments over the course of a year let's one a week which would result in a sale of one per month which on average is 750 to a thousand dollars in retail profit so what is easy to do is easy not to do it's easy not to add two names to your list. Oh, I'll just do four tomorrow. And then you miss four tomorrow and you say, I'll just do, you know, additional ones on Wednesday. What happens? The end of the week goes by. You've added two new contacts rather than 10. You say, oh, next week will be a better week. The number one activity is adding contacts to your list every single week. And after that, once you've gotten to the habit, the next thing is to connect and contact and approach three businesses every single day. If you've got a, a list of 20 candidates, reaching out to three per day is nothing. That's easy, right? You can do that over the course of a week while you're adding new contacts and some will, some won't. So what next? Build a relationship, move on, take notes, do your research and just focus on the process, right? Success is a journey, not a destination. And that's why we also say that sponsoring is is a process, not an event. The same thing, selling a website or selling a digital marketing product is a process. It's not an event. You can't just cold call or knock on a door and sell a website or sell a digital marketing product like Google AdWords. It's got to take some time and it's going to have to take some time building that relationship. Some relationships will build faster than others. Some sales will happen faster than others. But the idea is that you want to continue to engage new people all the time. So make sure that you submit your Sprint to Success tracking sheet for the week. And again, next week, next week is our final week. You get these next six, seven days to finalize your Sprint before we launch our April programs. By now, you should definitely have a list of at least 20 candidates and adding two per day. If you haven't already, search and identify some upcoming home shows and expos in your area. Write them down and, and plan to attend. Meet some people. Great way to add contacts to your list. Do some current research, right? Do the research for the people on your list. Most importantly, number five, connect and reach out to five per day. At least three for your web center business and two for your unfranchise. Each and every day, just reach out and connect with the intent to engage, not the intent to sell, not the intent to pitch or present, the intent to engage and build relationships. And as we've always said, just learn, practice, and use the referral networking approach certainly in this division, you'll have a tremendous, tremendous amount of success if you focus on doing so. So that wraps up this week's topic. What I'd like to do now is um, pull on our guest speaker for the night. I'm going to put him over to a panelist. 
and we're going to invite Ray Yedman onto our, our call tonight. And while he gets uh, situated here, we'll make sure he comes off of mute. But Ray Yedman is a certified web center trainer. He's a, a previous uh, trainer of the year, and he's a phenomenal, phenomenal web center owner out of the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. So I want to give everyone the chance to hear from a master networker, a professional in his own right. Hopefully you've had a chance to meet Ray, and if not, please do so at an upcoming event like the Mideast Regional or our Market America International Convention. And I want to just make sure Ray is on the line. Ray, are you on the line? I'm here. You got me, Jason? Yes. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Ray. The field is so, so um, fortunate to have you share some tips tonight. Well, I feel fortunate just to be here, and I always consider it an honor and a pleasure, and I thank you for asking me to do this because we are uh, – you and I have gotten to know each other um, for a little while now, and you know that not only is this, you know, one of – has been the biggest part of what I attribute my success to in business and in, in Web Center Division, but it's my favorite topic to talk about. So thank you so much for wanting to have me chime in on uh, networking and everything that goes around it because this is this is absolutely fun for me. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Ray, how long have you actually been a web center owner? I actually, you know, it was funny. Um, I had people, I think this is important for people to know this about me because, you know, they kind of, as you know, you know, see different panel speakers, coaches, trainers, et cetera. And people just kind of assume, you know, you maybe have been with the division for a long time. And, um, and I actually haven't compared to a lot of other web center owners. So I was in Miami in 2011 and as always got my three tickets. And I said, you know, I've been with market America for a number of years now. I really wonder if I could do something with this web center division. Cause you know, my background and, and I like the network, et cetera, et cetera. So, I actually eventually uh, activated it that year in 2011, so uh, just just about seven years now. Wow, wow! And what was your background previous to uh, to Market America? Well, I was corporate America. I had a corporate business development background in executive uh, search, staffing, and management consulting. Um, and even before that, I don't want to date myself too much here, but uh, <laughs> I was even a a, a blue collar guy that was a union guy. Uh, that was being fast tracked um, as a union representative, and and ultimately the short story, Jason, is the uh, corporate world uh, opportunity kind of came a calling to get into executive recruiting and staffing at a very young age, and that's what I did. And so again, uh, you know, talking about what I had to do in terms of networking, cold calling, dealing with gatekeepers, and things like that, um, put a lot of those skills to the test. That's for sure. When um, I got started with web centers. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're fortunate to have that background. I know I had a professional uh, background as a sales rep for a, a couple different companies as well, and I I can remember days where I had to literally pick up the phone 200 times to cold call businesses, and I didn't like it one bit. So the idea of just networking and meeting people um, when I came into this division was, you know, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Absolutely, and that phone even even to this day. Um, will still weigh 200 pounds, even for a guy like me who can talk to anybody. So I want people to understand that are listening in tonight, that even for whether it's people like me, Jason, or anybody that's been doing this for a while, the difference between us and you is it still weighs 200 pounds, but we, but we, we, we lift it we lift it quicker and quicker and quicker. <laughs> so you, you get over that fear. So it's still to this day, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, every time I have to make that phone call, even if it's a, a – sort of a cold referral and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that but yeah it's uh, I'm, I'm with you <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because you know there are a lot of web center owners brand new web center owners say oh well these guys can talk to anyone right it comes natural to them must be so easy for them but it's not always the case so I'm glad that you said that I'm glad that you said that so you know when you definitely, first, definitely. When you first started you know 2011 seven years ago um, what was your biggest source of leads um, when you first got started with web centers well, you know, it was funny, um, and I, I really, I say I got, I mean, I became a Web Center owner in 2011, but I really, and this is the guy's honest truth, Jason, I really didn't get ramped up until about 2013, so it was two years later, because uh, I just wasn't taking it seriously. Um, so to answer your initial question, because I'm going to kind of talk about what really started to t take hold for me, because I think it'll probably answer most of our uh, the questions tonight. But back in 2011, I had to start somewhere. Now, even though I had a cold calling background, I didn't do that. Um, I'm not saying I didn't make a couple of cold calls from time to time, 
But I just I started with my inner circle, uh, very much like Market America and the overall business. I mean, again, we're not trying to chase family and friends and and people that, you know, we know. But you have to start somewhere. So it was like just little mentions here and there um, within certain uh, uh, within my circle of certain people that have a business background that um, I knew wouldn't judge me. They're like, what, what, what the heck do you know about websites? So, and then next thing you know, I actually, the first website I ever sold was a referral um, in 2011 that came to me because my cousin, uh, who actually owns a, a barber shop, um, he had a guy that was coming and getting a haircut. The guy was talking about starting a small business, an e-commerce based business. And he said, yeah, you know, you know anybody that uh, can help me out with a website? And he said, you got to call my cousin. And, and, I, and I hadn't even sold anything yet. So my goal in my first year, Jason, was just to sell like one website and cover my expenses, make a little bit of money, and I would be happy as a clam. And it ended up, I was like, you know what? When I saw what the demonstration was like and how easy, as long as I, all the things that you just talked about, um, not overselling, just getting to know the person. I'm sure we'll talk about that. I mean, the relationship building. And this guy didn't know me from Adam. Next thing you know, I'm in his a uh, house uh, doing a demo. It's my, uh, I, actually, it was, I think it was my second demo. And just, you know, watch, shutting up, letting the product specialist do his thing. And it actually closed right then and there on the spot. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that does not happen all the time. <laughs> it may happen for you time to time. But I mean, I was so blown away because um, the guy was just blown away by ours, our, our, not only the demonstration, but what we could do in terms of his e-commerce business. And yeah, it was it was such an experience because right then and there is like, yep, I'm ready to get started. Here's my credit card. But but that was my first year. So but but I, you had to start somewhere. So it, I, I, um, I didn't like all of a sudden overnight on social media or anything like that, start branding myself as a website guy. I just started to put the feelers out there. I mean, again, Jason talked about this so much, but just just I was fishing. So I was doing I was casting wide nets with a lot of bait. And I was just looking for where the nibbles were and I just kind of reeled it in slowly and, you know, never, never yanked on it too hard and to, or, or to, to push people away and just got into what I call strategic conversations. So it was within my inner circle was kind of how I started to get my first couple before I really got ramped up two years later. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You know, people ask me, you know, Jason, how come in these sprints we haven't talked about, you know, what the actual sales demonstration or the sales process is like? And and you said it, it's easy. Once you let our professionals it get is. on the line, the, that's the easy part. The hard part is getting out there and starting to make some relationships and, and um, you know, getting that conversation started. And that's why these sprints are just focused on, on that. So um, here we are years later, 2018. How do you find yourself finding leads or, or where are these people coming from now? Is it pretty much the same type of thing? Is it all just referrals? Is, you know, share a little bit more. Sure, sure. Uh, I, well, I mean, again, I, and I'm not trying to, you know, uh, 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 blow smoke up Jason's rear end here, but guys, there's a reason why Jason knows what he's doing and the reason why you saw the presentation you did tonight about networking, about relationship building. But to kind of sum it all up, I mean, and Jason knows this about me, I am involved. I'm a, I am consider myself a power networker. And I, and I say that because I was taught at a young age when I first got into executive search and staff. I mean, here I was, a 23-year-old kid, you know, threw away the hard hat, put on a suit. Next thing I know, I'm in Manhattan, New York, and I'm having business meetings with very, very large companies that I'm trying to bring on as a client. And, of course, sitting down with very, very heavy executives to uh, bring them on as a candidate that I could represent for these clients. And so, so my boss at the time um, you know, again, the internet wasn't what it certainly what it was today because I'm, I'm going way back. It was still kind of getting caught up as far as staffing and the job boards weren't what they were today. Not at all. So you, you had to network. You had to network for candidates. You had to network for clients. So I took those skills and that's what made me a very, very successful recruiter within that industry was because I was always not afraid to ask, you know, well, who else do you know? Or, hey, listen, I, I noticed this about the, the, the company opening. You know, how's that working out for you with the other recruiting firm? Or, or have you filled that position yet? So all these things was, yes, yeah, so maybe I had a little bit of an advantage because they were very transferable. But it's still just natural questions, just like you talked about, Jason, um, where you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not being weird. You're not being pushy. You're not being silly. 
And, and that's what really have culminated these past few years. So yeah, about the last five years, um, I, you know, when I, when, when I started to sell really, uh, I wouldn't say high volume cause I wouldn't still consider myself a high volume site guy. I mean, I do sell a lot of sites, but, and then I, once I knew that I could be good at this with web centers, I said, okay, if you're going to do this, you're really going to do this right. You've already got the people skills down. You, you, you understand the process with MA web centers. You have to brand yourself. So that's when, right. I mean, again, and early on, I wasn't branded. I wasn't, wasn't talking about being a web guy, but as it slowly started to pick up, you know, uh, pick up the pace. And, and then we kind of went from a, you know, a crawl, a walk to eventually a sprint. I started to brand myself as an internet marketing professional, just like you talked about. Um, again, not an expert in really any one thing. I just talked about helping companies with their online presence. I kept it very generic. I didn't want to put myself out there in a with specific verbiage that I could be called upon to answer, whether it was technical questions or digital marketing questions that I just didn't have the answers to. But I always put myself in a position to say, I'm the guy that's got the guys or the guys that got the guys and the gals. I mean, I always had the team. And that's that's what really made me successful was understanding that I didn't ever try to dance around a question if I didn't know the answer. I never lied if I didn't know the answer. I flat out told me, you know, that's a great question. Why don't you write that one down and I'll make sure my product specialist covers that during the demonstration. So just a little bit of verbiage uh, for everybody out there, especially uh, for, the, for, the, for the newbies. And, I, and you probably heard Sarah Rose say this, um, especially if you've been around probably more than six months or even a year, but you have to understand you own the BMW dealership, but you're not manufacturing the cars. And that I, I don't know if there's a better analogy because somebody's going to come to the BMW dealership. They get to look at the car. They get to test drive the car. They get to ask all the questions about the car. They get to finance the car, but they're not talking to the people that built the car. And you're not. And, and when something's wrong with the car, you can still come back to the dealership. So you have to understand that um, here I am. And I get a lot of referrals and people say, raise the website guy. You got to raise the." And then when I get them on the phone, Jason, or, or, or if I'm having a, a, maybe a quick private uh, conversation, uh, let's say people Facebook me a lot. I always want to get to the phone. I don't want to talk over email. I don't want to talk over private chat because somebody needs to hear the tonality of my voice and they need to hear me say, you know, yes, that's right. I'm not a web designer or a developer but I'm partnered with the, what I feel is the best company to provide you with the best online solution. So I'm just going to be the liaison. I'm going to quarterback this project to make sure that it goes the way it's supposed to. I'm going to be there with you every step of the way, but I, that's right. I've got the team that's going to take care of you. And, and, and that's where I could just continue to build on that brand. Every time I was done a project or if I saw something come really cool, come out of the web center uh, portfolio, I would post that. And, or, you know, or I would share it and I would make a little, you know, kind of a little uh, uh, disclaimer just saying, hey, not one of my client sites, but done by my team. You know, how cool is this? Or, you know, any time a site that I would see that would come out and just like, you know, a little print screenshot, I, you know, that I knew was awesome looking. So little by little, people were like, wow, OK. So then my circle. And then, of course, the people that don't know you, that's where, you know, you could really have some fun with it, because just like the business, those people aren't going to judge you because they don't know you. So you can really get to know somebody and really build a great relationship. You know, even when I wasn't doing it that long early on, nobody asked me, well, how long have you been doing this? Or how long have you been building websites? And the reason is because of the posture, my posture and my confidence, knowing right out of the shoot. And I think this is really important for everybody to understand, especially if you kind of did what I did and you took a look at Web Center Division after maybe a year or two being in the business, if you've been around, then you've got to know we have the best company. And, and if it was good enough to be partnered with Market America at the time, when I was looking at it back in 2011, it was already good enough for me. So I didn't question or, or have doubts or concerns about MA Web Centers. I dove in. I said, if this is good enough for J.R. Ridinger to partner with this company, then guess what? It's good enough for me. Let's go. So... I know that's kind of a long-winded answer, Jason, but I really, people have to understand that what the networking uh, uh, aspects will absolutely lead to, you said it right before you, you ended with your slides, it will lead to your most business 
It will lead to, to partners with Market America. And in my opinion, it's probably going to lead to your best uh, partners um, and even best referral sources. And the reason is, is because they're business professionals and that's what they want to do. You know, if they want to work with other good business professionals. Absolutely. And I, I love that you also shared a little bit about the fact that you're the connector, you're the guy, you're you're not the, as you said, the the BMW manufacturer. I love that the, the car right. dealership analogy is perfect for what we offer. And I think new people also um, sometimes fear that. What happens if they ask technical questions? And, and uh, even seasoned people, you're going to get technical questions, but you can pass those off because you don't have to be the technician. You're not the web designer or web developer. Um, you know, if you're the Web Center Pro, that might be a little different. If you are a graphic designer um, and you're going to be doing some graphic design work for the client, then sure, you're going to answer some of those questions. But we've got great teams of professionals that do their job really well. Um, and you have to remember that this is a profession, right? So um, outstanding, outstanding tips there. So um, I'd like to switch gears just a little bit and ask you, are you currently – a member of any networking groups, any chambers, any BNI groups or anything like that um, as a source of leads or, or to help brand yourself? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> uh, yes, 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 yes. And this was, I'll, I'll answer your question. And if I may, just again, continue to give tips on that on that note and on that question. Please do. Um, I'm currently a member uh, of uh, a, a local lit tip chapter latip is very similar to to b and i um i at one time i was a member of my local chamber of commerce um i was also a member of an area it was a business association that was in a a higher end area if you will um as far as or, you know because i know my area i know my community i know my county and there's obviously anywhere in any state, you always have higher end, higher income, you know, areas that you have better opportunities, you know, for business. And so that's what I did. And and this is critical, ladies and gentlemen, critical. So, Jason, if I may, I, I want to talk about I want to tell them because uh, everybody I know some of them are thinking, well, you know what? I, I you know, I, I don't have the money. Those things could be expensive. Let me tell you something. So I just want to elaborate, you know, kind of give you guys just just take a breath and relax because back in 2011, money was not great for us. You know, we were struggling. I had to pick and choose my battles. And 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 truth be told, I borrowed the money to join this Latip chapter because when I went free as a guest. You know, I really felt in my heart of hearts that it was going to lead me to a lot of business. And man, if I did one thing right in my my business career, specifically with my web center career, Jason, it was joining Latip. And if if I may, I'd like to tell you how that came about because this will lend itself to making phone calls, building a relationship, and then building upon that relationship. But if I may, I'd like to tell that quick story about how that came about. Is that okay? Absolutely, please do. Yes, yeah, so I was I was a member of this business association, and this is another tip for everybody, and and it only had cost a hundred and seventy five bucks for the year. Guys, let me tell you something. If you can join an organization that has a couple hundred businesses, I don't care if it's only fifty businesses, but this had a couple hundred businesses at the time, and you get to slap your name, your phone number, your website, your profile on another website that can be seen by not only 200 to 300 or, or more people, plus potentially thousands of others because of the traffic that this, you know, that those uh, those websites and, and the events gets, you have to do it. You got to find the money. So I joined this group for 175 bucks. So one day I said, you know what? All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to warm up this call because I'm going to go through this list and I'm going to make a call and it's going to be a softer introduction because we're fellow members. Jason, this is my hand to God. This is what I did. I put up the, the list on my screen. I covered my eyes. I ran my finger down the screen and I stopped. I, I and, and that's the first number I called. And it turned out to be an automotive mechanical shop, an, a, a mechanic. I called him up. And we, we started to talk. I introduced myself. Hey, you know, my name's Ray. I'm, I'm a fellow member of the, you know, and just wanted to reach out to you and wanted to see if you were interested in having a conversation. You guys should be writing this down. Not interested in a website, not interested in me, interested in having a conversation 
about your website. Now, I had looked at his website previously, and Jason, oh, boy, was it. It still to this day might be the worst website I've ever – because it wasn't even a website. It was actually just, like, two pages, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was bad. I mean, this is five years ago, and it was bad for, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so this guy – and this is really important now, guys. So you're already breaking the ice because I'm already a member of this organization. So he says, yeah, you know what, Ray? I'm actually in the market for a new website. He says, but I'll tell you what. And we started talking. I started. We, I kind of at this point had at least talked about the process, um, which if we have enough time, Jason, I'll, I'll, I'll give people some verbiage of how I believe they could get close to almost 100 uh, percent demo appointments if they just kind of use certain verbiage. So we had talked about the demo and he said, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm Ray, I'm interested. I'll do your demo, but you have to come as my guest to my little tip meeting next Wednesday. <laughs> and I said, okay. I said, I said, I'll play now. And then it's, and that's exactly what I said. I said, okay, I'll play. So I said, I'll tell you what, Jeff, why don't you tell me about your Latip group? Now remember the guys, these are two business professionals, one business owner to another having a conversation. And he said, well, what do you want to know? I said, well, you know, I had visited other chapters and I said, you know, I kind of have mixed feelings, et cetera, et cetera. He's like, right, here's all I know. I've been there from the beginning. We've been around eight years. You know, man, we like the bus chops and have fun, but we're structured and we're organized. I think you'd like the group. So I went as a guest at the end of the meeting. He leans over. And of course, they're trying to entice me to join. And oh, there was a website guy here the week before and, you know, all this jazz. He leans over to me and says, look, I don't know where you stand. He said, I'm very loyal to this group. He said, if you join this group, he said, you have my business. I looked right back at him, Jason, said, well, I'm bringing my checkbook next week. I said, and I expect to close, ne you know, next Friday. So, no, he didn't close, Jason, for six until six weeks later because <laughs> he ran into <laughs> some problems. But nonetheless, he closed. And I can tell you this, guys, and, and I, there's so many other stories I could tell about this group. But that group now, J Jason, oh, by the way, borrowed the money because I did not have it. I had because that's, again, little, little, it was, you know, a little pricey to join. But that's why you're getting in with exclusive. And this is another tip for you guys in, regarding networking groups. Whether it's BNI, whether it's LATIP, whether it's XYZ or ABC, if you can get in with a group that's exclusive category, meaning one web designer, one accountant, one realtor, you know, one banker, et cetera, this way there's no conflicts of interest. And there's plenty of organizations out there like this, guys. Um, BNI and LATIP are the two most popular as far as exclusive category, but there's also a lot of organizations that are ran like BNI and LATIP, and they're much less expensive. In some cases, they're very inexpensive. But being an exclusive category, you're meeting with the same group of people every single week, you know, for breakfast or lunch or coffee or whatever, and it's your sales force, and you're passing referrals. Well, that that this group, Jason, now over the past, it's been over, uh, I'm not quite five years yet, has 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 uh, earned me in walk away net profit, not gross sales. Walk away net profit, a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Wow. And I mean, I'm talking everything from website sales to digital marketing products. I mean, I do other consulting on the side, but I mean, there, I, I sponsored a couple of people, um, you know, out of there. That you know, again, that was kind of the hey, let's have an off peak conversation. I don't want to talk about you know, marketamericanshop.com because I'm the website guy in the group. But I mean, my goodness gracious, there's companies that um, I was doing consulting for that I'm still doing consulting for in the past three, four years that have either came right out of that group or they stemmed from that group, you know, and, 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 and again, just kept referral after referral. So I got to tell you guys, um, if, if you can get in with the right group, now what's the right group? You got to trust your gut. You got to go as a guest. Don't be afraid to attend a couple different groups in your area. You know, meet and greet people. It'll get you out of your comfort zone. If you're somebody that doesn't like to speak in public, I mean, that's what this is all about. What you fear the most will make you the most money. Trust me, you know? And uh, I mean, again, I can't say enough about this group. I mean, look, there was times, Jason, where I went almost, almost maybe a whole year and didn't get like, you know, let's say a qualified lead where it turned into a website. But then all of a sudden going into the next year, bam, three, four website deals right in a row. Some that were actually internal members and some that, you know, had referred me elsewhere. So, I mean, I, I'm telling you guys, this the, if networking is where it's at. It's always going to be there. But remember, 
I had to continue to build on my brand. I had to continue to make the right, you know, put the right content out there, not only with my website, but with social media and continue to build on that. So when you're, and I'm sure Jason, you already talked about this early on, but you know, when you go into a place, I don't care if they're a client or not. Every time I visit a company or a business or a retail business, I first thing I do is I check in check in as long as they got a Facebook page and I ask them that hey do you guys have a Facebook page because if they say no ding ding opportunity but they'll say yeah sure it's you know and I'll say hey I'm, I'm just want to check in you know I'm a local business owner I love promoting local business which of course may lend itself later down the road to shop local you know at a later date and time but you guys you got to be confident you got to smile like Jason said you got to say hello I mean there's nothing wrong with being overly nice I mean because most people you know, that are in those jobs or sitting behind a counter somewhere. They're not the happiest because they don't want to be there. So you come in as a customer. They're dealing with rude customers. You come in and you got a smile on your face. You might just make that person's day. And then that's the person that's going to, whether they know it or not, that's the person that's going to give you the ammunition you need to get to the business owner if they're not the business owner themselves. So, I mean, there's so many, and Jason, I could say, man, we could talk for the next two hours. I can give so many tips about this. But, I mean, it, again, it starts with confidence, but you have to do some research and homework. I'm not telling people to go out there and spend buckets and buckets of money and join all kinds of networking groups, but you got to find one, and you get in with the right bunch of business professionals. I promise you, as long as you're a good, you become, you work hard to be a good networker and you give good referrals, you really make a good effort and build those relationships, not only will you sell websites, you're really going to just, you're just going to create friends. And obviously when you create friends that are business partners or business associates and colleagues, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And I'll tell you, that's what Latip has done for me. I mean, you probably heard my kind of my tonality go up a little bit when we started talking about this, because I am so passionate about the group and the people. And I mean, I was on the board for Four out of the five years I've been in a group, they put me on the board. I was membership chair. I mean, like I really was, I took a heavy, heavy active role with the group. And I wanted people to see that because again, guys, what's the best, what's, what's the most important thing when it comes to marketing? You have to be everywhere. Omnipresence. I wanted my name and my face and my RY logo every single place I could possibly put it. So if that was at business card exchanges, networking events, we were hosting trade shows, you know, mixers, whatever it was, I wanted my face and name out there as much as possible because I wanted people thinking about Ray Yedman when it came to possible website talk. And that's 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 the reason why or the biggest reason why, Jason, I've been able to get the referrals I have through networking. Sorry for the long windedness, but I just like I had to get that out there to the group. <laughs> That's great. No, very passionate. I mean, obviously, you know, a very wise $175 investment that you actually borrowed. Um, and look what it's turned into. You know, people do business, oh, people they know, like, and trust. And um, like you said, Absolutely. it's all about it's all about attention, right? And getting attention yes. and then adding value. So phenomenal. Right. Um, all right. So while while we uh, we'll close up, I know this this um, last couple of weeks we've been focused mostly on contractor types of businesses, whether in the trades, um, home builders, landscaping, um, you know, as we get into the spring market, we talked about trade shows. Um, any any best practices, any experience with this type of category that you want to share with the group before we close out? Yes, yes. And, I'll, and I promise Jason, I'll try to be short. But again, I got a lot to offer here because I have I do have quite a few contracting uh, clients. Um, again, guys, even the, even the automotive guys, which I, I think I have five of those, uh, you know, they're even contractors in their own right. But look, here's what I'll tell you about this. Um, one of the, the first things you want to find out, and, and Jason, what you did, man, this was something I was doing probably close to 20 years ago. But when you posted, you know, the picture of you taking a picture of, of, of a, that truck the other day, <laughs> I mean, you guys have to be doing this. Grab that smartphone, man. Have your little record. Like I used to, I used to back in the day, long before there was even cell phones, I used to carry a little tape recorder, bam, uh, you know, XYZ Incorporated, uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, you know, and phone number. And, and, you know, and back then they didn't even have websites on trucks. But my point is, you know, I research a company and I want to see how long they've been in business. And here's why. This is critical, guys, because if they've been around a long time, and if they haven't kept up with any type of online marketing or they have maybe just kind of dabbled in it, chances are this if this guy was probably making a lot of money at some point, and I guarantee you his sales, nine times out of 10 with these companies, 
they have started to decline. And that's because he's not hit the, the buying power is changing. Just like we talk about market America, where you have the baby boomers that, you know, still to this day are controlling, you know, most of the economy and the spending power and so forth, the consumer power. Well, it's changing. And you have the next generation, the younger generation, you know, obviously the millennials are going to take that over, you know, uh, sooner than later. But the point is, why do I bring that up? Because the younger generation are not asking mom and dad or Uncle Harry or whoever it is, hey, Uncle Jason, do you know a good landscaper? Do you know a good? No, they're picking up their smartphones and they're going on social media and they're and they're asking either their friends or they're or they're putting they're asking for the recommendations. And I can tell you this because I see it happen in my own with my own friends list where when people come to me, hey Ray, I know you're the guy that knows everybody. Hey, do you know a good blah 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 contractor? And of course I do. First thing people ask me, do they have a Facebook page or a website? So contractors, especially because they're very visual, if they're not online, they're, they're getting crushed. Um, you know, if, they're, if they don't have forms, okay, quick testimonial, uh, case study, Jason, guy didn't have a website, he came out of the tip, I served on a board with him, he's owned his business for 30 years, he came to me, said, Ray, I'm thinking about putting money into some traditional advertising, you know, with this one magazine that kind of targets high-end homes or a website, and I didn't say, well, no, go with the website, I just said, okay, let's compare. I said, you know, you have a situation where you're only going to go to about 3,500 homes and it's going to be the same homes every single, because it's a regional magazine that's based. So it's the same customers every month that get the magazine. I said, that's great. They're high end. They're affluent people. I said, but with a website, you could reach thousands and potentially millions of people, you know, tens of thousands of people in the area. I said, look at the capabilities where people are more now than ever filling out forms. Well, after a, this was his website went live last year. Within a month or two, I forget when it was, after he went live, he comes up to me at the next meeting, said, hey, I got my first form that was filled out on the website. And I was like, oh, great. He said, I got an estimate, I got an, a, 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 an appointment out of it. About a week later, hey, Ray, the deal closed. So guys, I'm telling you this because qualified buyers or more serious potential customers and clients are gonna be more prone to wanna fill out that form because they want to talk to somebody or they want to have a conversation, even if it's over email. Now, granted, that company's got to do their part and pick up that phone or answer that email and be responsive and try to get them in the door so they can close them because the website and Facebook and all this online stuff, that doesn't close anybody. That's still up to the company. Keep that in mind. But we're giving them the opportunity to have more leads because of their the proper online presence. So contractors, especially you know, people want to see pictures of work. They want to see recommendations. They want to see reviews. Re contractors more than anybody are going to get good reviews. And certainly they get the most bad reviews because of their industry. It just is what it is. So, I mean, if, if they're, you know, if they're a good contractor, they've got a good reputation, or if they're brand new, I can tell you right now, if they're not advertising online, at least in some capacity, they're just not going to compete. So contractors is a phenomenal way uh, or a great lead a good sweet spot for our platform for email marketing by the way okay because the minute a contract that does work the chances are unless they're uh, they're cutting their grass every week you know that that consumer that homeowner is not going to need them for maybe another year two years or maybe ever so a nice little email once a month or once a quarter through our email system saying hey here's our latest and greatest project or oh hey by the way we're offering 10 20 percent off as we head into the season oh man you know what i forgot to tell neighbor about that so guys you there's so many tools that are i mean I, i'll say this tailor-made i believe our system is tailor-made for service-based and contracting type clients yes we have phenomenal e-commerce and that's 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 on a whole nother level but when you're talking about uh, 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 service-based business whether it's repeat or they got to constantly get new new clients and customers our platform's tailor-made. So go out, talk to contractors. They're spending money in traditional uh, uh, channels that they're not getting their return on, okay? They always have websites on their truck, especially if it's like Jason showed the other day. It was a fairly new truck. It had some wrapping on it, some, you know, some, some decaling. Go to the website, just like I did. I looked at this guy's website, you know, the five years ago, and it was god-awful, and the guy knew he was time for an update. And here it is five years later and hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit later because of one phone call. So go out there, make it happen.
pick up the phone. The more you do it, that 200 pound phone is going to become a two pound phone. I promise you. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Everything that you shared, Ray, thank you so much. It was, uh, a great way to conclude our final webinar in this uh, sprint to success uh, through the month of March. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for myself, from MA Web Centers, and of course uh, for all of the Web Center owners that are on the line tonight. So thank you, Ray. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure. It's an honor. Thanks for having me, Jason. And uh, I'll see you in uh, what about four, four or five weeks in uh, Ocean City, my man. Yeah, yeah, a couple weeks down in Mid East. Fantastic. Thanks, Ray. All right, you got it. Thank you so much. Great. So you can connect with Ray uh, on on his uh, social media, obviously, but also on our Web Center Owner Support Group. If you have got questions about anything that he mentioned tonight uh, on the webinar, certainly reach out to uh, him on the Web Center Owner Support Group. Um, we've got a lot of great conversations happening there. So if you've got questions, comments, concerns, best practices, um, put them out there, put them out there. But I'm also going to make a request. I'm going to request that when you've got some success stories, put them out there. We want to see people's success stories. We also want to see um, your clients' testimonials, their feedback. We want to start collecting a database of digital marketing clients that are having success, having results. You know, we've got some great before and after photos of website designs that have been taking place. Uh, we're going to be launching more of those. Um, just uh, spoke with uh, MA Web Centers, and, and we've got some great things happening on a weekly basis that we're going to start pushing out more uh, before and after designs that we're doing. Um, but also those digital marketing products, the Google AdWords, Facebook ads, social media management. You know, we want to hear from uh, web sector owners and your clients in terms of the results that you're getting so we can get more of that exposed so we can all uh, leverage that uh, success. So it's been a phenomenal um, March Madness Sprint to Success uh, push out this final week. Work hard. You know, if there's been someone on your list that you've been hesitant to reach out, this is the week to do it. Just pick up the phone or stop in, introduce yourself, um, and, and start that relationship. Again, it, nothing's going to happen until you start engaging with your candidate list. So that's where it starts. And once you do that, it's all a matter of timing. Book those consultations, schedule the demos, and go from there. So um, let's have a great week this week. I want to see your success. Post it out there. And then our next um, monthly campaign is going to be our step up campaign. It's all going to be based on building share of customers. It's about taking those conversations that we've had or existing clients that might be website clients, and we're going to be focusing on adding on other products like Google AdWords, like Facebook advertising, like online reputation management, search engine optimization, content marketing. We're going to help you identify ways to increase other products and services even things like iTransact and merchant services. How can we get more out of these business owners to help them become more profitable? This is all about increasing revenue, decreasing expenses, as well as streamlining business practices for them. So we're going to help small business owners um, become more profitable in the long run. And you want to be a part of that. So that's going to be through the month of April. We've got two webinars scheduled for that. It's going to be April 8th and April 15th. And it's going to be a two-week campaign where we're really focused on building share of customer in our step-up campaign. So pay attention to social media uh, as well as some of our e-news that have been going out. So register for those. I want to thank you all for uh, participating in this March Madness Sprint to Success. And uh, we're going to make sure that we continue doing these on a monthly basis.